Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Cece, aka your new bestie. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, become part of the family. And if you're a returning subscriber, hey bestie, thank you so much for tuning in back in with me today. So before I get started with this video, I do want to apologize for being gone for like what, a month? It's been a minute since I recorded the video, but a lot's been going on. But I'm getting back in the flow of things and also we're gonna be switching up the channel a little bit so stay tuned well this is really like the first video to show y'all that so we here a lot's been going on but god's been working on me i've been working with god and we just we just doing our thing you feel me <laughs> so as you guys can tell by this title i wanted to talk about childhood trauma and the reason why i wanted to speak on this is because i feel like a lot of people talked about childhood trauma but it's hard for people to acknowledge the stuff that they've been through when they're a kid and let me explain it like this there's people who will say things that they remember happened to them as a kid or um things that they dealt with as a kid things that they've endured as a kid but they're not acknowledging the fact that because that certain situation happened to them as a child it affected them in their teenage years and in their and in their adult years so in this video i kind of wanted to speak on that topic of acknowledging your childhood trauma and not in a way where you're just knowing that you have trauma for your from your childhood, but actually acknowledging how that affected you growing up so you can unlearn the things that you developed from that specific trauma. One thing that I've been doing behind the scenes is really evaluating the things that I've been through as a child and how is it still affected me to this day so I can heal from that forgive whoever caused that trauma upon me so that I can grow and become the woman that God has called me to be. One thing that I can say about acknowledging trauma is that it hurts. It hurts because especially when we're acknowledging the stuff that we went through as kids, some of us laugh it off to, you know, make it seem so funny. Like for example, how people talk about getting whoopings and getting these very bad whoopings growing up and you know, they laugh and you know, they always say, um, my hard head makes a soft butt and you know, the things like that. But then we also have to realize as children, we don't deserve to get whooped brutally. Okay, especially in the black community. I specifically want to talk about this in the black community because these whoopings are normalized very much so. And I see it happening upon generations and upon generations. Now, one thing I can say growing up, I didn't get beat. I didn't really get whoopings like that. My I grew up with my grandma and she was very old school. Like, yeah, she popped me, yeah, she did that, but she was having me stand in the corner. I couldn't leave that corner. That was that was the worst for me because I like moving around. I like going outside. I like doing stuff. I had to go stand in the corner. But I have witnessed it and with my other siblings and to see how they are now to this day. I'm not going to go too much in detail. But to see where they are right now compared to the stuff that they've been through when they was little, I can understand why they took certain routes that they did. And it's hard for them to acknowledge the stuff that they have been through because of that. And not just with my siblings, but I see with a lot of my other family members. I see with a lot of my other family members as well. The reason why I wanna talk about this is because mostly everything that happens to us, that, if, that you know, where we are now or how we react now or how we think now is because of how we were when we were kids. So if we experience very hard times as kids, I think it's from the age of zero to seven. Those are like our learning years. So whatever we learn from those years or endure through those years, those kind of build us and shape us to who we are, if that makes sense. I'm jumping all over the place, but I wanted to go back to those whoopings. So the whoopings, they are not normal, okay? We come from family members who would rather whoop kids and a kid's supposed to stay in a kid's place, a kid's not allowed to talk, a kid's not allowed to do any of that, right? But at the same time, if a kid doesn't know something, how can you expect for them to not do it? Or how can you expect for them to know that that's the wrong thing if no one specifically taught them how to do that? One thing in the community that I noticed is that there isn't a lot of communication to go straight to violence. And I feel like it goes all the way back to, yeah, I'm finna bring it back, y'all. I feel like it go back to slavery days because we deal with parents who came from parents 
whose parents were slaves or whose parents before them were slaves you know like the generations are very close like it's not something although it's something that happened hundreds of years ago it's still very fresh if that makes sense because how our I'm gonna say for example our great great grandparents how they were raised they were raised on the fields you know they were raised as slaves so then when they had kids and you know they had to raise their kids they have trauma even though they have trauma and they put that trauma down on our great grandparents so then our great grandparents put that trauma down on our grandparents and then our grandparents put that trauma down on our parents and then the parents put it down on us and it's a it's a repeating cycle it's a re, it's a, a cycle that just doesn't end right um but it actually it does end it ends with you the cycle ends with you if you can if you can sit here and acknowledge the things that you have been in your child been through in your childhood and realize even as a child you didn't deserve that because there are some things we just simply do not know as children now there are kids out here that are rebelling and a parent, if you are listening to this and your child is currently rebelling or acting out and doing whatever, sit down, talk, and listen to them. Don't get to accusing them. Don't try to send them off to boot camp, military school. Don't do none of that. Sit down and really become their safe haven. I feel like that's a problem in the black community. We feel like we cannot come to our parents with certain things because we fear that we're gonna get judged. Um, we're gonna get yelled at you know we don't like being yelled at we sometimes we know that we're wrong we know that but kids act out in a way to get attention and this is something that i've i've seen growing up but also with my major i've taken i've taken a lot of psychology classes um lifespan lifespan psychology i've taken sociology i've taken a lot of class that are dedicated to juveniles and what juveniles do and kind of the things that build up inside of them and mentally emotions wise everything that builds up inside of them that cause them to rebel and become a delinquent okay. so with that being said if your child is acting out I, I wish I wish as black parents you guys can realize that your children aren't just acting out to be acting out. There is something that they have endured and it may not even be specifically from you. You know, it may not have been anything you did, but that don't mean that they haven't been through anything. It could be a friend who is, it can be somebody at school bullying them so they feel like they got to walk around and be tough. It could be someone, you know, in the family speaking down on them so they don't feel good about themselves. It can be anything point being is actually sit down and talk to your kids sit down and listen to them stop that i'm the parent you need to calm down you need to watch how you talk because there are sometimes as kids we don't know the correct way to express ourselves kids don't know specifically how to express themselves sometimes they need to yell and how do you expect your child not to yell when all you do is yell how you gonna tell them not to scream when all you do is scream you don't talk so they don't you're not setting that example for them you have to learn that everything that your child witnesses starts at the house it starts at home how you they go out into the world it does start at home now the world is a very messed up place but there are also light there's light in it there's so much light in it especially when you teach your child how to be a light okay so that was kind of ramp i just i really had to get that off i don't know where that came from because that wasn't even a part of what i wanted to talk about i holy spirit you know i guess he wanted somebody to hear that but back to acknowledging the childhood trauma knowing that your childhood can be very difficult there are a lot of things that and I'm speaking firsthand. I'm not saying this because I studied it or nothing. I'm saying this because I personally know. I've been through some things in my childhood. I'll take one example that really messed with me when growing up. There was a time where me and my dad, me and my dad's ex-girlfriend had got into it. And it caused basically my dad to stop talking to me and we were staying together. So it was so awkward coming home and I'm speaking to my dad and he's just ignoring me. He's not speaking to me. He's not talking to me. And there's he didn't wish me a happy birthday. Me and my dad didn't start back talking until we found out that my sister, my big sister, only had a couple more months to live. So 
that was that was also like it all kind of tied together with how traumatic that was because during a literally a month or two before like me and my dad's ex-girlfriend got into it my grandma passed away so i have different emotions going through my mind at the same time so when my grandma passed away me being ignored and then finding out that my big sister is finna die y'all can only imagine what my emotion was like how i was acting like i wasn't really no bad kid but i can tell y'all i have an attitude i've had i still kind of i'm working on my attitude problem still to this day but like back back then baby i had an attitude on me i had a mouth on me even though i was quiet i had a mouth on me very smart mouth and so that affected me growing up it got to the point where i was very quiet I sat back and observed and sometimes that's not a bad thing but there are times where it's hard for me to speak up or it feel like I have to of course I naturally want to watch what I say but I really feel like I have to like be on eggshells about things and that like it's so crazy because it literally took me to take a public speaking class in college to really help me like learn how to like speak up and really like get out of that and the way that like it happened i wouldn't have been sitting here talking to y'all about this honestly but my point being is because i was able to acknowledge that hurt and to because i always wonder like why am i so quiet why do i just go mute why why you know why do i do that and i realized it's because as a little girl i was ignored and so my natural instinct was to just be quiet if i if no one's going to say anything to me i'm not going to say anything i'll just wait until my little sister come home or wait until I go to school or wait until I'm around a family member who actually wants to talk to me but you feel what I'm saying like I was just quiet and that affected me growing up where I didn't want to speak I didn't want to speak out I was one of those little shy kids but you know my mom will always tell me you're not shy and it's like I know I'm not shy but that trauma that I went through made me shy if that makes sense i hope that 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 makes sense it makes sense in my mind but i hope it clicked in yours so when i was able to acknowledge where that came from i was able to go back and actually forgive my dad for it because i don't think i ever like sincerely forgave him for it before like i did um just for the simple fact like it was a very like I'm a daddy's girl, so that was a very hard thing for me. Like, I said I forgive him, but I, I low-key, like, it kind of, I'm not going to say put a strain in our, our relationship, but it also made me be on edge. It's like, I don't know, it turned into, like, making sure that I always stayed on my dad's good side. I don't know, like, it was just so weird. But now that I have fully forgiven him, it's more like, okay, if you pull that again, I don't care how stubborn, how, you know, how grown or how many grudges you can hold. If you pull that again, I'm not going to go the extra mile like I did before to try to get your attention. Because come to me and talk to me, especially now. Like, I, I went through that with my dad when there was a point where I had to sit down, like, sit down with him like come and talk to me about me don't sit here and tell other people what i did or what whatever the case may be just come and talk to me you know we we can talk to each other me and my dad we have a great relationship to the point where we could just sit here and talk about anything that's my best friend so that was like you know that was like a aha moment for me when i was able to heal that and then also be able to give that child in me that voice be able to speak up for her and to let her know that you are heard even though you didn't feel heard when you were you know but you're heard now you have a voice you have an impact you have that you have a gift of speaking naturally be able to say words that people actually need to hear and you didn't even know that they needed to hear those words you naturally have that gift and you've always had that gift inside of you and the enemy tried to hold that from you. One thing about trauma, if you hold on to that trauma, the enemy will keep you in that repeating cycle, okay? And one thing, I've mentioned this before, but forgiveness truly is key. And it, I know I said before that the forgiveness isn't for them, it's for you, but it's really for both of you guys. And the reason being is, for one, you can't walk around with that hurt and bitterness. Because if you do, you're going to go around hurting people who don't deserve to be hurt. But also... It helps them as well because you have to forgive others just as Christ forgiven us. And so forgiving them puts them in the good graces, whether we know it or not. Because they may walk around with some guilt inside of them because of what they did to you. They may not be able to acknowledge it 
but they they gonna walk around with that hurt forgiving them can help them forgive themselves and that's ultimately what it comes down to is being able to help them forgive them know that they are forgiven by god and knowing that everybody's forgiven. It's cool. You got to you know you got a fresh restart. But I also say just because you forgive them does not mean you have to go back to being buddy buddy with them or they can have complete access to you. That's where y'all set up those boundaries. That's when boundaries come into play. It is so important to know that once you are removed from a certain thing and once you are healed from a certain thing, there are certain things that you just cannot go back to. You can't cuz you worked so hard to get out of that. God put all that effort <laughs> into helping you and delivering you from this thing that used to keep you far away from him and what you were called to do and you know who you're supposed to be so therefore you have to set up those boundaries you don't have to hate them you don't have to speak bad on them but you have to let it be known i forgive you i love you i do but I also have to make sure that you stay arm's length. You can't be in my circle no more. You can't be this close no more. You can't be, you can't sit with us. You feel me? You can't sit with us. And it's not a bad thing. If they take it as a bad thing, that's some internal healing that they have to do. Okay. But at the end of the day, this is for you. And this is for your healing and for your journey and for your calling and for your life. Okay. You have to be able to forgive, set those boundaries acknowledge what you've been through and know that you as we grow we are going to unlearn a lot of things from how we grew up especially as we grow in christ there's a lot of things that we have to let go of and a lot of new things that we have to learn i don't even think this time last year i would have been able to talk about these kind of things i was actually just reading my journal this morning from this time last year and i know for a fact that i wouldn't have been able to sit down and talk about these kind of things and be able to speak upon my trauma even if it was just the little things but speak upon my trauma and the stuff that i went through and actually put it out and tell you guys but my obedience is tied to somebody's deliverance i may not be the only person going through this you know so that's just go to that just go to show when it when you really take the time to acknowledge the stuff that you went through as a child and acknowledge how that's not normal okay especially in the black community a lot of things are normalized some of these things are not normal it's straight up abuse it is it really is um whether that is mentally whether that is physically verbally emotionally whatever the case may be it's not right especially as children children are supposed to be loved children are supposed to be nurtured stop with this tough tough love stuff that's not what love is it tells us in first corinthians what love is okay stop with the tough love because love is not tough love is compassionate love is kind okay Love does not envy. Love doesn't boast. Love doesn't do any of that. I'm just, I know I'm saying it out of order. I know I am. Don't get... Anyway. Um, <laughs> my point being is kids don't need the tough love, okay? They need someone to love them. Genuinely love them. It starts at home. Parents, especially, I know you guys been through trauma as well. Why do you want your child to endure the same things that you did? Why would you want your grandchild to endure the same things that you did? If you know what it did to you and how it made you feel as a child, why would you want to inflict that same thing on your child? Okay? It's not too late to turn it around. It doesn't hurt to apologize to your child and let them know that, you know, I wasn't in the right state of mind. I wasn't in the best, the best place mentally. I had a lot that I was going through. Kids understand Kids understand. You you will be shocked how much kids understand. But just like how you will want your kid to communicate with you, communicate with your child the right way. Your child is supposed to be your best friend. This is who is looking up to you and who you are supposed to be leading and helping. Okay? Just like how kids are supposed to obey their parents, y'all y'all not supposed to bring your children to anger. Y'all not. Y'all not supposed to sit here and downplay y'all children, hurt y'all children, make your children feel less than what they are. No, you guys are supposed to speak life into your children as well. Speak life into your children so your children will already know what love is before they even go out into this world. And teach them the love of Christ as well. Teach them. Help them experience that type of love as well. 
especially as Christian mothers, everybody want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. That's another topic for another day. Another topic for another day. And that don't just go for women. That goes for men as well. I know there's a lot of fathers who are very abusive, who are very abusive, who are very absent. That's, that's a whole nother topic, y'all. I can't even go into all this today. But that <laughs> is what I want to talk about today. I didn't even write no notes on this. Y'all know if y'all been here for a minute, y'all know that I usually write notes. This braid, hello? Anyway, um... If y'all know I usually write notes. This time I ain't write no notes. This was going straight off the dome. I allowed the Holy Spirit to lead me and to speak to me, speak through me on this. Um, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that it can encourage you to heal some of your trauma, all of your trauma, if possible. You know, we don't want to walk around with that hurt. We don't want to walk around with that anger, that bitterness, that fearfulness we don't we can't walk around with that those things aren't of christ those spirits aren't of christ okay so i really pray that this blessed you i really pray that you take the time to heal and sit with god and to know that there's a lot of things that you have to unlearn and there's new things that you have to learn okay um, if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave it a thumbs up. Go ahead and share it with a couple of friends who may need this video. Um, comment some things that if you are currently in your healing journey, healing stages, whatever, comment some things that are helping you. And even if you're going through a hard time right now, if you feel comfortable with commenting, go ahead and comment. If you don't feel comfortable, I always leave my email in the um, description box. I know that I say for business purposes only, but I am starting up a thing where I am um, opening up calls. I'm actually going to be doing that starting the 20th. Uh, is it the 20th? Yes, I think that's on a Monday. Anyway, I yeah, the 20th. Um, I'll be opening up um, a thing where you can book a free 60 minute call with me basically to trauma dump. <laughs> I don't want to say trauma dump, but to basically talk about the things that you have been through. And I just pray that I'll be able to give you the proper resources to help you or activities to help you heal and acknowledge what you've been through. Um, so I'll leave that down in the description box as well once the bookings finally open for that. But excuse me if you're watching this video beforehand um just feel free to email me i'll em email you back if we got to set up a thing where we talk or whatever it can be that okay so um i will see you guys in the next video i don't even i can't even tell you what the next video is going to be but just know like i said the video the the things is changing on this channel a little bit i'll still be talking about business stuff don't get me wrong but um, there's also other things that I, I feel like that I need to touch on and talk about and that's what I'm gonna do I'm on this I'm on this whole new little journey. You feel me? So <laughs> Stay tuned for the next video. I see y'all in the next video. See ya Spinning through identity reveal another pretty little scheme Say